If you're working with a database in your Next.js application, and there's probably a pretty good chance that you are, Prisma makes a very good pairing. And that's especially true if you want to have real-time features in your application. Today, we're going to take a look at Prisma Postgres and the real-time features that it has to give ourselves a real-time experience with this application called MessageBox. MessageBox is just a really simple inbox. We've got one model here, this message model in our schema. And we're going to start by creating a new Prisma Postgres database and migrating against it so that we can get our table in place. Let's head over here to console.prisma.io. This is the Prisma data platform. And we'll go ahead and start a new project. We'll give it a name here. I'm going to call mine message box, just like that. And we'll choose Prisma Postgres. So Prisma Postgres, totally free here in early access, a very generous free tier as well. Once general availability comes around, it's a serverless database running on unikernels. And that means we get no cold starts. So if the database goes to sleep, it boots back up instantly the next time that it's called. So no cold starts with Prisma Postgres. All right, we have got this region setting here. I'm just going to choose US east that's fine and we'll create the project all right so it's going to spin up we get provisioning as the first step and then we're going to be into an activating state here and then finally we're connected a matter of 10 or 15 seconds until our prisma postgres database is ready to go Scrolling down a bit, we've got a couple keys, a database URL that points directly to our database served by Accelerate, Prisma Accelerate. And we've got this Pulse API key. Let's copy those and back over in the project, we'll go to .env and we'll paste those in. Okay, we can save our environment file and close that down. We're good to go there. The next thing we'll do is our migration. So we've got our schema in place. We've got our database set. Let's come down here to the terminal and do npx prisma migrate dev. We'll give that a name called init. All right, we are migrated. Everything looks good to go. The next thing we can do is seed some data. We've got this seed script. C.ts has a bunch of fake messages. We can do npx prisma db seed. It looks like the messages were seeded. We've got five messages. Why don't we come over here to the Prisma data platform to the studio area? All right, Studio opens us up here to our message model, and we've got our five records that were created as part of the seed script. So we're good to go. One cool thing to maybe take note of here is we're using this ULID type ID. This is new as of Prisma 6.2. So looking in the schema, we've got ULID. You might be used to seeing CUID or UUID. ULID is a bit different. There is a spec available on GitHub, actually. It's a universally unique, lexicographically sortable identifier. And it's got some advantages over UUIDs. You can read up on it here, github.com slash ULID slash spec. And it's now available with first class support as of Prisma 6.2. So ULID is what we're using there. Okay, why don't we run the Next.js application and see what we get with those messages. So we'll do npm run dev. We've got this dev script, which is gonna call next dev. That's going to open us up to localhost 3000. So let's check this out now in the browser. Over here, we've got message box at localhost 3000, and there's our five messages. We can just click through them and check the previews and you know a typical inbox kind of experience. And so the idea here is that we want to be able to service new messages to users without them having to refresh the page. So some real-time capabilities, just like you might see in Gmail or other inboxes. And since we're using Prisma Postgres, we can use the real-time features that it offers by way of Prisma Pulse to get new messages on the screen right away. There's a little bit of setup to do for this. And the first thing to do is to grab the extension. So over here, let's grab a new terminal window and let's do npm install at Prisma slash extension pulse. So the Prisma pulse extension comes from that package. Once we get that in place, let's go and make use of it. We've got this prisma.ts file. This is a Prisma client singleton. So you may have seen this if you've done work with Prisma in a Next.js application. You generally establish a singleton, a single instance for your Prisma client that you can use across your application. All right, so up at the top, let's import pulse. So import with pulse, that's what we need. With pulse from Prisma extension pulse. Then down here, we want to extend our Prisma client to make use of it. So let's call for dollar extends and we'll extend it with pulse. We're going to need an API key and that's going to come from process.env.pulse API key. And if that's not available, we'll just pass an empty string. All right, so we have got pulse all set up against our Prisma client. 
And what this will do is it will allow us to stream events that happen in our database. So it could be creates, could be updates, could be deletes, anything that's happening in our database, we'll be able to listen for it. Now the question becomes, where do we actually listen for those events and where do we act upon them? And for our scenario here in our Next.js application is we'll actually need to run this little side server that deals with socket.io. So socket.io is going to run on this very minimal server, this minimal backend, and then be able to communicate with the client when new updates need to be made. So what we've got here is this stream new messages function, and let's furnish that out a bit. The first thing that we're going to want is a stream. So let's give ourselves const stream equals await prisma message stream. So we're going to be able to stream events from our database, specifically from the message model, the message table. So the next thing we'll do here is loop over them. So let's do a for await loop here. For await const event of stream. Let's start with that. And let's console.log a received event. So we'll have the event display here. So our events here are going to have this property called action. And that's going to give us a clue of what is happening and what we might want to do based on those actions. So what we can do here is say if event.action equals create, then we're going to want to act on that. And with our socket.io setup, it looks like this, io.sockets.emit. And we'll pass a message create event, message create. And then we'll pass the new data that's going to come along with that event. So event.created is contain the actual data that gets written to the database. All right, so let's save that up. And then let's go over to this inbox.tsx file. And what we find in here is we've got this use effect set up where we are going to listen for message create events using Socket.io's client library. And then once we get a new message, we can simply set it as a new message to be rendered in our view. So let's see if this is all wired up. Let's go npm run server here in a new terminal window to get our server wired up. All right, we're listening on 3001, that's great. Let's come over again to Prisma Studio here in the Prisma Data Platform and we can add a record. I'll just pass in some data for myself here. My email, my name, message, hi there. And for the timestamp, it defaults to the Unix epoch. Let's grab something else. Let's do 0112, something like that. All right, let's save that. There it is in the table. Let's come over to the terminal again. And what we see is that create event happens and it got reported here in our console.log in server.ts. And if everything is wired up correctly, we should have had that emitted by socket.io so that the front end can pick it up. Let's check out the front end and see what happens. So message box over here, there's the new message. Showed up right away without the need for a refresh. Why don't we do another one and we'll do a quick swap between tabs to make sure this is happening really quickly. So add record. Same deal again, just put my information. Hi there again. All right, grab another date, put it in place, and that looks good. So we'll hit save, and then we'll hop right over to message box to see it come through. All right, so we'll save that. Back over in this tab, there's our new message without any need for a refresh. So one thing here is that the dates, they're coming through as a day before what we put into the database, and that's just typical time zone handling that we would need to adjust. But the important bit here is that we're getting real-time features in this Next.js application, and it's all happening thanks to Prisma Postgres and Prisma Pulse. One thing we can check out here is the Pulse area, and what we get to see in this area is some reporting on what Pulse is doing. So we have our message model, our message table, and we've got six database events against it. This area also gives us some instructions on setup and different settings that we might want to use. So you can check out this area to get your insights and some other information about Pulse. So if you'd like to get started with Prisma Postgres and the real-time features that it offers for your Next.js application, head over to console.prisma.io. It's a couple clicks to get started. And as we've seen today, it's a very fast setup. You can get going right away with a new Postgres database and get some real-time features in your Next.js applications. If you've got any questions about Prisma Postgres or working with it in a Next application, feel free to drop a comment below or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at prisma on x slash Twitter. Thanks for watching.